Lesson 3.6, Model Decimal Subtraction. The previous lessons for Chapter 3 are linked in the description if you missed them. We can use base 10 blocks to model what is happening when we subtract decimals. We use 100 unit cubes as one whole. We use a long of 10 as a tenth, and we use one unit cube as a hundredth. Base 10 blocks can model decimal subtraction to help us find differences. We have 53 hundredths minus 36 hundredths. We remove the hundredths units first. We need to take away six of them, but we only have three here for 53 hundredths. We can trade one long of a tenth as 10 hundredths. Now we have 10 of these, we can take six away. We take these six hundredths away, the three that were here and three from up here, and that's going to leave seven hundredths and four. We take away three tenths, and that leaves one tenth and seven hundredths. It leaves seventeen hundredths. And we can regroup one whole square as 10 tenths if needed. If two decimals are both less than one whole, their difference will be less than one whole. We have 99 hundredths, that's less than one whole, and it's the greatest decimal that's less than one whole. We're subtracting one hundredth, which is less than one whole, and it's the least we can subtract from this amount. We get 98 hundredths, and that's the greatest possible difference, and it's less than one whole. So even if we use the greatest decimal that's less than one whole and take away the least that we can, we're going to have the greatest possible difference, and it's still less than one whole. We can use a 100 grid to help us subtract decimals. Each fully shaded grid, grid equals one whole, each column of 10 equals a tenth, and each small square equals one hundredth. We have 85 hundredths minus 26 hundredths. We start by shading in 85 squares on the grid for 85 hundredths. Then we cross out 26 squares for 26 hundredths. And we count the shaded area that is left as the difference. These are each 10, so we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 tenths, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 hundredths. We have 59 hundredths. Here we have 2 and 12 hundredths minus 34 hundredths. We start with 2 whole and 12 hundredths, we trade one whole as 10 tenths, and we trade one tenth as hundredths. We subtract four hundredths from our hundredths, then we subtract three tenths, we count the remaining blocks for the difference. We have one whole, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tenths, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hundredths. The difference is one and seventy-eight hundredths. To solve this using base ten blocks, we had to regroup twice. We had to change one whole into ten tenths, and we had to change a tenth into ten hundredths. We can use a quick drawing to subtract decimals that need to be regrouped. We use a square for one whole, we use a line for a tenth, and we use a little circle for a hundredth. We have three and sixty-three hundredths minus one and forty-nine hundredths. We draw three squares for three whole, we draw six lines for the six tenths, and we draw three little circles for the three hundredths. So we represent the minuend with our drawing. And we trade a line of one-tenth 
for ten hundredths so that we can subtract that nine. We circle and cross it out and it becomes ten hundredths. Now we can take away nine hundredths. We subtract four lines as four tenths. We subtract one square for one whole. We count the remaining drawings as the difference. We have two whole. We have two whole. We write our decimal point and we have one tenth and we have four hundredths. We've got this little brown one here. That's one, two, three, four. The difference is two and fourteen hundredths. Here we have five and fifty-four hundredths minus two and seventy-eight hundredths. We start by drawing five and fifty-four hundredths. We have five whole, so we have five square. We have five tenths, so we draw five lines. And we have four hundredths, so we draw four circles. We need to subtract eight hundredths from the four hundredths, and we can't. So we trade one of the lines for ten hundredths. We cross out the line, we draw our ten little circles. Now we can subtract eight by circling them and crossing them out. Now we need to subtract seven tenths, but I only see four here. We can trade one of the whole squares for ten tenths. Now we can subtract seven of them by crossing them out. We need to subtract two whole, so we cross out two squares for two whole. We count the remaining drawings as the difference. We have two whole. We write a two in our decimal point. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tenths. We count the hundredths. We have four, five, six. The difference is two and seventy-six hundredths. So remember the decimal point belongs between the ones and the tenths place. These represent ones and the lines represent tenths. We have two and thirty-four hundredths. If there's no whole number, then we've got four lines, five, six lines, and we've got four, five, six, seven hundredths. That's sixty-seven hundredths. And decimal points are necessary for writing a decimal number because they don't always end in the same place value position. The decimal point helps us know the place values. By having a decimal point in between the ones and the tenths place, we know that the place value just to the right of the decimal point is the tenths place and the next one is the hundredths place. Because each small cube represents one hundredth, we would need one hundred of them to represent one whole. And because each long of ten is one tenth, we would need ten of them to represent one whole. Regrouping is very important because each place value is based on groups of ten. This is true for whole numbers and decimals. And we can trade a greater model for ten lesser models to regroup a place value when there aren't enough to subtract. We can model subtraction of decimals by modeling the minuen. That's the first amount. Then removing the subtrahen by taking away blocks or crossing out units. And we can regroup by trading greater units for ten lesser units. So the first amount is the minuen. We take away the subtrahen and the answer is the difference. By circling and crossing out, we can see how much is taken away or subtracted. Then we can easily see what is remaining as the difference. We can see we have two tenths and two hundredths as the difference. In our next lesson 3.7, we're going to estimate decimal sums and differences using number lines and rounding the decimals. Stay safe, stay strong, have a wonderful day. I'll see you next time. Bye.